pleasant good morning to everyone. Welcome once again to uh, another episode of the Cold Brown Show. Heard exclusively right here on the Open Mic Broadcast Network and Spreaker.com. Today's guest menu looks like this. Jim Klein Peter. He's a contributing writer for the Advocate Suburbs uh, Southern University Athletic. He'll join me in our number one. We'll talk a little Southern University baseball on this young season. The weather has been playing uh, wreaking havoc on uh, baseball games across the region. But in some cases, the game must go on. He'll join me at about 10 15 ish. First guest. Uh, today's Polos Brown show. Then our usual uh, cast, uh, Coach Van Petaway, he'll join me talking some Southwestern Athletic Conference basketball. A lot going on in the conference, a major upset in the conference. And we say major, we've got to give kudos to Coach Pugh and the purview and them. Uh, Lady Panthers, they defeated Jackson State by 10 points. And don't you don't you say it's Monday Madness, although it did happen on a Monday. Uh, but we will talk about that. Congratulations to Perfect Charles Edmonds of the Alcorn State Radio Network will join me in our number two, as well as Brandon B.J. Jones. He'll join me in our number two. So Jim Klein, Peter. Coach Van Petaway, Charles Edmund, Brandon, B.J. Jones. Of course, your comments, your questions will be uh, taken on today's show. Uh, you can reach me at the Coles Brown Show at gmail.com on Facebook, the Coles Brown Show, Coles Brown. I'll have uh, the Messenger app open. A lot of you like to leave messages and comments there. Also, the franchise underscore show on Twitter and Colos Brown Show on Instagram. With that being said, here's what's trending. Here's what's trending on the Colos Brown Show. Alabama State sweeps the SWAC Indoor Championship once again. Fourth consecutive year, double-double. Women and the men's track and field team, they're just can you say dominant, dominant, or dynasty? But congratulations to Alabama State. Cedric Thomas resigns from the University of Arkansas Pine Bluff and updated now. Doc Gamble is the new head coach at the University of Arkansas Pine Bluff. Boy, that was swift and quick and to the point. Get your thoughts on Cedric Thomas resigning from University of Arkansas Pine Bluff, now a defensive back coach at Southern Miss. All I'm going to say is I didn't think Southern Miss was stable right now under Coach Hopkins at Southern Miss, but there must be something going on. The unseen hand, where there's smoke, perhaps there's fire. We shall see. Also, big news, and boy, it got kind of nasty on social media. LSU spring game will be held at Southern University's A.W. Mumford Stadium April the 18th. Historic in itself, uh, LSU had to petition NCAA to be able to move the game because their turf is being torn up as we speak, and they're also putting in a new irrigation, uh, new drainage system, excuse me, at LSU Tiger Stadium. So, some things have to be worked out as far as network coverage and what have you. But uh, LSU spring game will be held at Southern University's A.W. Mumford Stadium. And I've had people to call me so excited. One, I'll give you one guess. He'll be a guest on this show later. Oh, boy, can you calm him down? And then, finally, Southern LSU officially 2022 in football, September 10th, 2022. So, get your thoughts on what's trending on today's Carlos Brown show. And, and I definitely want to hear from you. I, I'll give my perspective, my input on everything. But 
I, I definitely want to hear from you on on, on those uh, topics. Dr. Prince, good morning to you. Congratulations to your Prairie View and them Panthers. Uh, on the women's side, Coach Pugh, a Louisiana native, got to get that in there. Um, got it done. And if anybody that can pull off an upset, she has a proven track record of doing so. And just congratulations to Prairie View and them Panthers. It's, it reminded me of the Rocky Four movie. You remember when he's going up against the giant Russian? He got cut. And then the, the brother in the corner said, see, he's not a machine. He's not a machine. He's a man. He, he can bleed. Absolutely. Uh, good morning to you, sir. Uh, I feel like Mr. Rogers. It's a beautiful day in the neighborhood. And before I get any further, you know, uh, you don't you cannot have rabbit ears in this business. And what rabbit ears are, where you listening to all the naysayers and what people are whispering when they think you can't hear them. But you have to go on and focus and stay laser focused and get the job done. Right. But last week. Someone that listens to the show, I didn't get the name or whatever, and I was talking about the possibilities of Prairie pulling off this upset on Monday. And if I'm not mistaken, and I'm going to try to vaguely remember the comments of something to the fact that Prairie View's women are nowhere near the class level of Jackson State basketball. So I think it was a caller. Well, not a caller. Uh, someone who was listening. Yeah, 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 yeah. I know. Yeah, I didn't, but, didn't think it was going to happen. Yeah, he said, man, you, 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 you wishful thinking, Brother Prince, to that degree. And I'm not going to rub it in, but it, I, I sure thought about that person when the, when the victory was gone. And I'll tell you something. I had Coach Pew on the show this week. And every now and then, and I think you know me well enough, brother, um, I'm a root for my team, but I'm realistic, too. But I said, I, I, I sent Coach a text. I said, uh, you guys are going to win by six. You can take that to the bank. And they didn't win by six. They won by ten. And guess what? If they meet them again, they might lose. But guess what? They came through on Monday. I don't care if it was Monday madness, Saturday sassiness. They took care of business, and I'm proud of my Panthers. How about that? Yeah, they got it done. Yes, sir. And basically – that's why I said congratulations. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. I call it the way I see it. And Jackson State is still number one in the conference on the women's side. But guess what? They're human. Yes. They were taken down. Um, a couple teams came close, but it didn't happen. So now they're still into in the thick of a uh, race that many have already crowned them. Uh, champions on the women's side, and they very well may do that. But you're going to be looking at seeding and trying to get secure a home game in the quarterfinals, and then you win one game, you move on to Birmingham. And if you win two games in Birmingham, you're champion, semifinals and the finals. So it, it's going to be uh, very exciting uh, to see how uh, the race is will go and both on the women's and and the men's side um, there was also and it didn't believe it or not it didn't make <laughs> one of my trending stories it there there was an altercation between uh, jackson state and prairie view the punishment was swift and it was consistent by by the commissioner yeah it was and, it was and, and and that you know that's the way it, it should be there's a standard. I, I don't have any kids, but growing up, it was a rule in the house. Certain things would not be tolerated. If it happens, it was swift. And I mean swift, just God rest both of their souls, my mom <laughs> and my dad. Yes, sir. And they didn't play. No excuses. You can spin it whatever way you want to. You just, you just can't have that. Competition, emotions are always running high, but you must always control the beast that's within Right, and that's right. The way I look at and you know what the tragic behind all of this was, and it wasn't the altercation that took place. It was what was lost in all of this is that Prairie View had won their twenty fourth consecutive home game, which is number two in the nation for all basketball. We made mention of it um, during the week on the Mike Prince show when um, you know CNN, you know they showed the fight, 
and everything, and it all across the world. But I was like, they love to show up when some bad stuff happened. But I wonder were they even aware that there was a 24-game home winning streak. But they didn't even bother to report on that. That's why we do what we do, brother. That's why we do what well, we do. Yeah, you look at your local news. Um, a guy that that say all oh, lady that said a hundred homeless people. It may be in the back of the news if it's even reported, but violence, a death, that that's going to make the news right away. No so, doubt. As soon as you come on in the news, so I, I keep that in the mindset. That's why. You should be able to tell your story better than anybody else. You better preach on a Saturday morning, sir. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, that's just that's my opinion on 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 everything, and 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 that leads me into this. Uh, sometimes on social media, you have to take it for what it's worth. So when the announcement came of the LSU spring game will be held at Southern University, A.W. Mumford Stadium. Just kind of looking at some of the comments, I was like, wow, I- I'm not going to get into that. And I-, I read some, and some of them just was just very blatantly bad comments, you know, as far as safety. Um, I'm not going to A.W. Mumford Stadium in North Baton Rouge, I'm not going there. Will I be safe? Et cetera, et cetera. Never had a problem. And I've been covering Southern Athletics for quite a while. Um, athletic events, no problem. And so if Southern and LSU has worked this out, and they had to petition the NCAA to be able to to have that game, on Southern's campus. And if they were able to work it out, so be it. That's the way I look at it. But I, I know there are some people that uh, don't agree with it and they, they haven't shared their comments publicly. Some have shared it with me privately. Some concerns. That's a better way to put it. Uh, yeah. But at the end of the day, Southern University made the decision. LSU made the decision and they have to live with that decision. Okay. Um, let me this. I, I don't like I said, I don't want to spend too much time on this. What is your view on this, sir? What I just said, I'm talking about so, as far so, as you don't have a problem. I mean, you know, you said some people, I, I don't, I don't have a problem with it. Uh, will, will I be there for the, uh, spring game? Probably not. Right. But it's just my, my opinion only right that's what they decide they have to live with the result maybe maybe some good can come out of this not that Mumford Stadium is is a, a city a dump or anything like that but in comparison to LSU Stadium maybe when they get there and they see firsthand the comparisons maybe they can start you know thinking about their neighbor. See, they're not good enough. This old saying, you got the same people you meet coming up, you meet coming down. So when you turn your nose down to people, then you have to use their facilities. You know, be careful how you handle people because you never know when it might come back around and this be the case. And we do understand the bottom line of this. I'm hoping that uh, Coach Banks and, and company have worked out some type of monetary sweet pot as a benefactor of all of this, too. Um, you know, it's good to be a good neighbor, but, you know, we, we need some monies to get some things done. And my question is, how will they handle the tickets at the gate for people that come in? Or is it going to be free? Well, Coach Banks did say they have some things to work out. Um, I, I know in the past, uh, LSU has offered, and I, I'm sure – it was free of charge. I'll go out on a limb and say that. As far as practice facilities, they have been able to uh, uh, allow Southern to, to, to work out, especially when the weather was real bad and muddy over, over the years. And, and I'm sure from a financial standpoint, they're going to work that out. At least hopefully they have. So we shall see. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. We shall see. And I think those who come there will be, who haven't been there 
if they've heard some things, they'll get a chance to see for themselves that a, a lot of renovations have done, and I'm sure um, the synthetic turf, they're going to be pleasantly surprised. Oh, no doubt. No doubt. You know, and, that- and it, 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 it's, it, it's not bad. Now, things they're going to have to work out logistically, and um, Southern will have a, uh, a scrimmage earlier in the morning, and then the facility will be for LSU uh, to have their, their spring game. And then, of course, as I stated earlier, um, Southern University will have their spring game April 25th. Now, my more pressing needs is seeing Southern University hire some staff, some new staff members on the football team because that's, you know, that's what they're going to have to do. And and now I'm hearing there's a coach on the defensive side now that they've got to replace. Wow. So more pressing needs with Southern. Yeah. Well, it's more pressing needs with all of us, with all of us, brother. Uh, but I, I'm hoping that it all works out for the good, man. And and yeah. I'm and I'm pretty uh, sure I, I, it will. I don't think everybody else has five coaches they've got to hire on their staff, but maybe they do. I don't know. Um, but that that takes precedence over the spring game. Not that I'm trying to brush brush it under the rug, but hey, again, that's Southern's decision, and they have to live with it. And hopefully things work out. Where at the end of the day, life goes on. Baton Rouge will hopefully be a better place, at least for one day. But reality comes back to bite you in the hand afterwards. But hopefully they can build on this. Hopefully they can build on it. That once again proves the strength and the power of athletics, uh, regardless of what the sport is. In this case, of course, it's football. Um, politics is the one common denominator that can draw communities together this, uh, despite racial background, political association, financial status. And maybe this could be that avenue that could somewhat open that door of getting some things that are obviously needing to be discussed, but they go undiscussed. For whatever reason, people don't like to rock the boat. And sometimes you have to you have to turn the boat over in order for the dialogue to start. And it it might not get everything that you need to get out in the open, but you got to start somewhere. And I can see this as an avenue through this athletic venture that they're working on. We'll have more discussion on this and more. Uh, The listener who made uh, his prediction last week. He has spoken, but what I must do first, I've got to take a time out. Our first guest, Jim Klein Peter, is ready. But uh, J.H., I will definitely come back to you. Well, let me just say this. This is what he said. See, and this is what I'm talking about. You're manning up. I had to eat my words on my Prairie View JSU women's basketball prediction. Congratulations, Prairie View a and and Sandy Pugh. There you go. That's simply, that's what that man, And look, and thank you, brother. Thank yeah, you. Yeah, he came back and said it. Yeah. You know, and that's, and that's what, that's, you say manning up, that was the key operative word. We all want to pull for our teams, and, and sometimes the truth is ugly, you know, and I know everybody didn't give them a fighting chance, but sometimes you got to just, you got to, as they say, wish upon a little star. And that was the start. And it might burn out the rest of the season. But last week, dreams come came true. For for that Monday night. Yes. They did what nobody else did in the conference. All season long. Yeah. They and, won. And I'm PV And when proud. Coach Pugh comes to Baton Rouge in a few weeks, standing ovation, all dandy and good. But once that uh, that buzzer sounds, <laughs> get the slapping. Do that again. Not, li- that not again. literally. Do that again. Do but the get buzzer the, sound. Get the plan. Give get me that the buzzer. plan and whipping people. Give me that buzzer sound one more time. <laughs> Give me that buzzer sound one more time. <laughs> and <laughs> that, that's actually not a good one. <laughs> oh, boy. I, I see our, our people are, are listening. Uh, 
VW say X. Oh, wait a minute. I got to pull it back up. And I got to guess waiting. You got to love it. Live t- VW says X Prince about PV baseball team. <laughs> yeah, well, hey, you know what? <laughs> you know what? We're about to take a break. <laughs> yeah, well, let's, 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 come, let's come back to that. Um, we won yesterday. I, we won yesterday three to two. So I don't know. Yeah. What, I look. I don't know what else you're talking about. I'm, <laughs> and, and you know, I, I don't believe in rubbing it in. Go ahead, because, man. I can people, take it. Well, no, but people are already in an uproar. It's just like you. You're a coach after the after the game, and you had a chance to go up by 14. I reminded of Mike Dixon, <laughs> and your your quarterback changes the play and throws a pick six. And you lose the ball game. And then the first question is, Coach, that was a tough loss. How do you feel? <laughs> How do you think I feel? So don't <laughs> throw salt in the eye. You know you're just hey, asking for it. Hey, man, hey, look. I'm when, not going to do it. When I, I saw when, the score. <laughs> I saw the score. I'm not. I'm not going to even take. I'm going to say this: we got to go for a break. Somebody text me. I had over 30 texts that night of the game, and I had about 50 emails in the morning that morning. Somebody say, Prince, did y'all give up a pick six and they missed the extra point? Wow! Because it was 27 to nothing at the time, and all I could do is grin and take it. And and then people say, Oh, I know you're going to go off in the morning, man. I, 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 I'm I'm a father of four children, and sometimes when they're so bad, you don't even have to say nothing. You just, you know what happened. I know what happened. Let's learn from this and move on. And with that yeah. being said, we need to go to a I, break. I would, yeah, I, I, I would agree with that. What, what are you going to say, hey, coach? How do you feel about that thirty to two loss? How you think I feel? Oh, you know, my oh my, yeah, some some things just left just left unsaid. Somebody asked, what? was that the spring football score? Oh, here come the jokes. My goodness. Yeah. Oh, man. Well, I tell you what. We'll take a time out. Uh, we're going to talk baseball. We're going to talk a little Southern baseball with Jim Klein, Peter coming up next. Then Coach Van Petaway will join me in our number one talking swag basketball, Charles Edmund, Brandon B.J. Jones, and, of course, um, your comments and the hey. Way to man up, uh, J.H. Appreciate it. Take a time out. You're listening to the Carlos Brown Show, heard exclusively right here on the Open Mic Broadcast Network and Spreaker.com. Be the one with courage to fight child abuse. All Texans must find the courage to fight child abuse. Learn the signs and symptoms and report suspected abuse to appropriate authorities. Learn and know these warning signs. A child who undergoes changes in behavior appetite, or routine. Watch for unexplained injuries, a change in academic performance, or loss of interest by a child in regular activities. Trust your instincts. If you suspect something, do something. If you believe a child is in an abusive situation, please call the Texas Abuse Hotline at 1-800-252-5400. Be the one with courage. To find your local children's advocacy center, visit onewithcourage.org. On behalf of children, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Have sports, we'll The Open Mic Broadcast Network serving student-athletes from Little League, high school, and collegiate coverage right here on the Open Mic Broadcast Network. From coast to coast, from, coast, 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 from, from dust till dark. Til you can catch all student athletic action right here at the Open Mic Broadcast Network, the station designed with you in mind. Serving the community through faith and athletics, the Open Mic Broadcast Network, the voice voice, 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 of student athletics. Welcome back to this week's edition of the Carlos Brown Show, heard exclusively right here on the Open Mic Broadcast Network and Spreaker.com. Our first guest of today's show, Jim Klein-Peter, contributing writer uh, for the Advocate Cover Southern University Athletics. Jim, uh, good morning to you and uh, Happy New Year. It's been a while. 
Yeah, it has. Uh, a lot has happened. Um, yes, indeed. Happy to be back. Southern baseball. Um, vast improvement over last season up to this point. Uh, what, two and three on the season? Kind of your, your quick early season take on this Southern University baseball team. Well, I, I think they – it's so early, it's hard to really tell. But um, I, I think what you've got now is a team that may not be as ready now mm-hmm. to win, but, but the program is, has definitely matured under Carrick Jackson. And I think uh, even with all the new faces on the team this year, I think his, um, his overall vision is in place. Uh, he, he, the, the players are gonna are gonna learn. They're gonna be young, but but uh, I, you know I don't I don't see much of a I don't see that much of a drop off, and I think that's what you're looking for consistency. Youth inexperience improvement. That's what I put down for for my notes because Coach Jackson said one position player coming back, but a lot of new people. But he felt confident. So don't judge his team early on, but. After you know, when it gets to conference play, and when we look back, he he feels that this team will be right where they need to be in in, in those terms. So you you agree with that? I, I think so. And if they if their pitching uh, is as advertised, I, I think that that'll be. Um, I, I think that will carry them a long way. I, I just they just outslug people last year, and uh, probably didn't get as good a pitching as they needed. But they've got a lot more arms this year, and he's got a plan. He's got a uh, he's going to have a bullpen. He he he's focuses on his bullpen. He he's going to have three pretty solid bullpen guys, and he's going to be ready to go with them at any point in a game. He's not going to try to get expect to get seven innings out of a starter, other than maybe Eli Finney, but he's going to be ready with his bullpen and he's going to have his arms, uh, you know, ready to jump into a game to cut off a rally or to, or to close out a game. So I, I think that's where you're going to see this. And then the, the hitting will come around. Uh, hitting takes usually a little bit longer. But you know, Jim, I was impressed when I watched their opening game uh, against the university of new Orleans. Uh, that first pitcher they went up against, uh, he, he had Southern bats under control and then, Boom. Southern was able to string together, you know, singles. And, and then they had another pitch in for UNO. But I thought that opening game, just me, was going to be tough. But I was pleasantly surprised that they were able to fight through it, such a young team, and, 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 and win that uh, ball game. And then against Alcorn State, they took control of that game. And then on the back end, they lost to a seasoned Alabama State team and then a Grambling State team. But I, I was really impressed with, with that opening game against the University of New Orleans. Yeah, um, you know, it's it's tough. You open on the road, you know, you, you, with a young team. You don't know what you're going to get. But I was kind of surprised to see them win that game, not because I don't think they're that good enough, but just the idea of uh, having almost a, a complete overhaul of the lineup, and then you go on the road in that first game and you win. Um, but I, I think if you, I think you, you look at the two losses and, and they were competitive in that, in those losses. Uh, yeah. one of one of them went 10 innings. They, they had a ch- chances to win that game in, in, uh, in nine innings. Um, and then, uh, I mean, the, the, the grambling game, it was, I mean, they were, they were in position to win that game too. They could have won either one of them. So, uh, and then again, the, the, the fifth game, you know, you see LSU last year when they played LSU early in the season, they lost 17 to four. And the other night it was like a competitive game. And even at the end, they were, you know, Southern was knocking on the door. They pushed a run across. Uh, so it tells you that this team um, has already learned a little bit about, about, you know, uh, winning every pitch, not trying to win the game in the first inning you just win it by winning every pitch, and they went right to the ninth inning. They're still trying to score runs. Yeah, and your article that you produced, uh, you talk about that Southern Show's vast improvement over uh, last season, as you just mentioned, seventeen to four uh, loss to LSU, and then later in the season they had improved and and they defeated uh, LSU at Lee Hines Field. But but I guess. Um, 
this is probably what you can expect, especially in a non-conference play with, with the with the youth movement, a youth team that's full of youth. Um, they're there, they play well, then they make mistakes. So I think this is what Coach Jackson is thinking, is that they can work work through these type of um, situations and, and improve as they get into conference play, which will be coming up very shortly. Yeah, I, I, you know, you want to play good teams. You want to play tough teams. You want to have some success. So you got to play teams, you know, a little more on your level. You can't play LSU every week. And, you know, they're going to play Texas Tech. But I think uh, it'll be interesting to see what they do against the uh, University of Arkansas Little Rock. They're going to play them on Sunday. And um, that'll be interesting. The, the trip to Texas Tech, that'll be a tough trip. Um, but uh, uh He's trying to instill in them. It's it's like having a good at bat. Sometimes you know you can you can get a blue hit. You got a hit, but it wasn't that good an at bat. What he wants them to do is um, be wary. Uh, you know, know the pitches you want to lay off of, and know the understand the count and what what you expect the pitcher to throw in a count, so you can know when to predict you might get a, a hittable pitch, and a little things like that. It, it's 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 easy to talk about. It's hard to do. And, uh, you know, the, you know, you, you'll get a little bit better at it. And I think they'll start to score more runs as the season moves on. Uh, visiting with Jim Klein, Peter contributing writer for the advocate covering Southern university athletics. And, and Jim, you kind of can see now with coach Jackson from year one to year two, a, a, a lot of improvement, of course, <laughs> getting into the NCAA tournament. With with having such a young team, do you feel that this for Coach Jackson is also an exciting time for him being able to have to um, teach these young players, but also he's established a culture at Southern University and their baseball program in, in year three? Absolutely, because establishing a culture, that's really a lot of hard work yeah, yeah. because you have – you have to forsake results and, uh, if you're establishing a culture. You're trying to teach them how to play the game, not just – sometimes you lose a game uh, just for the sake of learning something. And I don't think he has to do that anymore. I think he's, his culture has taken hold. Um, you know, guys like Hampton Hudson and some of the uh, – Xavier Moore and some of the pitchers that are back are, are reinforcing that with their teammates. He's got some freshmen – that are going to contribute. It looks like the, the solid freshmen that are going to be in the lineup every day. And, um, you know, if he doesn't have to worry about babysitting them, he can teach them. But if you don't have to babysit them every minute, you know, it, it's, if you have, a, it's a lot better. And, you know, they, they could be, uh, the program could be better off than it was a year ago and they could not win the SWAC this year. Um, so, but I, I, I don't, I think they're going to be competitive. I think they're going to be in it until the uh, late stages of the season. If I made the statement, the best times for this baseball program, I said er, uh, earlier, later in the year, but could this time next year we'll be talking about, maybe a season that has a chance to be like last season as those young people develop. Is that being maybe a, a bit being too positive as far as this baseball program? No, I, I don't think so. Uh, you, you look at the potential and, and it's because he has the culture established. Um, you're looking at, they're, they're, they potentially are good. I wouldn't pick Southern to win the SWAC right now. I mean, I wouldn't do that right, right. now. Um, I, I'm just going to say that they are going to be competitive because he's got the culture established. Uh, he told me if you go back to his first season, uh, I can't remember exactly what the were, eight or nine and 33 or something like that. You know. They played a lot of one run games. Uh, and, and they, and that's pretty good for a first year. I think he was already starting to make some progress. Uh, he had them believing. And I, I think they're going to be – I don't think they're going 9-33 and 33 this year. I, I, I think they're going to be, the, you know, a winning record. I don't know. You know, it just depends. They've got such a tough schedule. They play a lot of good teams. 
And, um, but I think they're going to be competitive in the SWAC. I think they're going to uh, be in the race at least the, uh, through the last couple of weekends of the season um, be, because, he's, because of his, his experience and, and his ability and the fact they went there last year. And then they're going to have a target on their backs, that's for sure. But uh, uh, he has recruited well. He's got good talent. He's just got to, it just depends on how it develops. Speaking of development, um, SWAT competition starts for Southern. They'll, they'll, I guess they'll just stay in Texas. I don't think they'll come back and then go back, but um, they open up SWAT play at Prairie View. So, but what we've all talked about, getting off to a good starter and then conference play will be uh, something that Coach Jackson and the staff of players will want to do at Prairie View. Oh, yeah. Um yeah, that's a good that's a good point. They're they're going to stay in Texas, and um, you know, he wanted he he really was disappointed that he wasn't able to have a, a series this weekend because it's uh, it would have helped them next weekend at Prairie View. But but playing Texas Tech will will get them ready for it. I mean, they'll they won't see better pitching at Prairie View than they will at, at Texas Tech. Um, so I think that. Uh, it's probably a good move to do that just to get started knowing that, you know, they needed to grow up in a hurry, but, uh, I know he'd like to be playing. He would like to have been able to play last night. Um, and, and, and today, uh, but getting that game against uh, little rock on Sunday, uh, should help them somewhat. He's going to try to pitch everybody probably, uh, uh, again, because he's not, ha- he's not, he's only going to have one game and not three. So, um, I, you know, We'll see. You know, we'll get a good indication that first weekend. Yeah, I, I think so. And by the way, the games that were lost because of, uh, and, and we're praying for the, uh, the the people in Jackson, Mississippi, and the surrounding area, because uh, Baton Rouge knows very well, 2016, going through uh, what those people are going through right now, but the SWAC MEAC Challenge, um, Southern, Jackson State, and Alcorn, um, what was it? Western Illinois, North Carolina A and T, and FAMU. Yeah, mm-hmm. well, that was that have been some good, some, some good competition. Uh, SWAC versus MEAC. Uh, well, the weather wins again, Jim. Weather wins yeah. again. <laughs> weather seems to be winning a lot these days. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I, I understand that. Um, finally, uh, Jim hadn't heard anything about. Um, Southern football, Coach Odom's in, and they uh, trying to get some assistant coaches in. You haven't heard anything, have you? I haven't. Um, he's probably going to take his time. You got to find the right guy, and, and he's really, he's really got to find a. Um, I, don't, I don't know if he's going to go offensive coordinator, quarterback coach in the same job, but he's got to be careful and get somebody who can come in and help with Arius Skelton. Um, most most offensive coordinators coach quarterbacks, and and uh, he lost his quarterbacks coach and his offensive coordinator. So he may bring in a quarterback coach, offensive coordinator this time, and and, and I don't know, maybe that will have a, a, a positive effect on 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 Skelton. So I, I think he's got to be careful with that. Um, find the right guy, find somebody who can come in and and um, make a quick transition. But he but he's got to have somebody in for spring because they've got to. You know they they they've got to be uh, uh, building building toward the season. Uh, uh, you start that in the spring, so I, I think we'll probably see something in the next couple of weeks. Um, and I'm, you know, I'm sure there's some coaches out there that that would love to come to Southern uh, and, and be the offensive coordinator. It'd be quite a you know a stepping stone, uh, ultimately a stepping stone, but a good place to to ca- to camp out and having good talent to work with. Well, if I could have. Uh some sources in a human resources office. I'll find out who's applying. You you would think you would have a good number of uh, resumes in there, but hey, you, you never know. And then as far as recruiting, uh, Jim, you have to have your coaches in place as to how they're working on the 2021 class. So uh, hopefully we'll hear something uh, pretty soon, but uh, I just had to ask that had you heard anything. And, and as always, appreciate the time. Uh, thanks for discussing um, Southern University baseball today. My pleasure, Carlos. Have me on anytime.
All right, thank you. Uh, Jim Klein, Peter, contributing writer for the Advocate, cover Southern University Athletic. He joined me on today's show. Going to take a quick time out. Switch gears. Coach Van Petaway, former men's basketball coach at Alabama A&M. He's never a loss for words. We will talk with him next. And by the way, uh, Southern University uh, last week, quickly, uh, both women and men were 2-0. and Home victories, uh, women, over UAPV, 85-61. to And then they followed that up with a 71-40 to victory. So, boy, 24 and 31 point uh, victories at home. Guess what? I want more. I need more. I need more. On the men's side, uh, some big victories. Wow. 73 to 49 over Arkansas Pine Bluff and Southern Defeated Valley 95 to 62. But guess what? That was last weekend. You're happy with those victories, but boy, now women and men on a three game road trip through Alabama, Alabama State today, Alabama and them, and then Alcorn State next Saturday. We'll see what Coach Pedway has to say. This race is starting to uh, really get difficult for some teams. Some teams are still in there playing for seeding. Coach Van Pedway next. You're listening to the Carlos Brown Show. Hello. Hello. This is Lonzo Hardy, Jr., president of the SWAC Alumni Association. The SWAC Alumni Association is an organization founded on December 10, 1999, at the Sheraton Hotel in Birmingham, Alabama. Its mission is to serve as a rallying ground for individuals who have made the Southwestern Athletic Conference the illustrious conference that it is today. Its membership is open to former student athletes who have played in the conference in any sport, as well as to coaches, athletic administrators, staff members, game officials, and fans. Annually, the association holds a Legends Awards and Roast Banquet or Luncheon, where it honors individuals with Lifetime Achievement Awards, a Chuck Process Wagon Master Award, and occasionally a Distinguished Service Award. Proceeds from that event help to finance degree completion scholarships for student athletes who have exhausted their playing eligibility at SWAC universities but who may still need an extra semester or two to complete their college studies. For more information on the SWAC Alumni Association or to get information on becoming a member, you can send correspondence to SWAC Alumni Association, 875 Miller Creek Lane, Newport News, Virginia, 23602. The email address is SWAC Alumni Association at yahoo.com. Welcome back to this week's edition of the Carlos Brown Show. Heard exclusively right here on the Open Mic Broadcast Network and Spreaker.com. Next guest, guest number two, Coach Van Petaway, former men's basketball coach at Alabama A&M. Coach, good morning to you, sir. Well, good morning, you guys. Um, I'm happy to be here. Uh, we're happy to have you, uh, as always. Man, this basketball season has... It's coming to a close in conference play, but coach, uh, we had a listener who basically said no way in hell that Jackson State would lose the Prairie View on the women's side, but he was man he manned up. He sent me a message saying he was wrong. Congratulations to Prairie View and him and Coach Pugh. They were able to take down the iconic JSU women's basketball team. Your thoughts on that upset? Well, that, that it was it was a big win for the Prairie View program. Uh, Jackson State got caught up in that buzzsaw, and Coach Pugh had them ready to play. That's good for the conference. Remember, I said as a coach, you don't want your team to have to <clears throat> to have to lose a game, but they lost mm-hmm. it. Now <clears throat> you got to find out what are you made of. You got to be able to put this behind you and come back. 
you got to come back because this is the stretch run for the tournament. You want to be playing your best going into the tournament. So they got to regroup. Jackson State has to regroup and be ready to go. And it's interesting, Coach, because we would call it Monday Madness. And, and I had a colleague. He's a, he's a JSU alum. He, he basically said the TSU game he wasn't as worried about, but he was worried about that Monday game because of the emotional game they would have with Texas Southern coming into the Baby Dome at Prairie View. And lo and behold, he was right. Right. And then the other thing is, too, remember I keep telling you, with the way the schedule's set up, you only have that one day in between for that Monday yeah. game, whereas you got all week for Saturday. So, the, you know, that's, that's one of the pitfalls of, of the way this, this, the, uh, comp, the schedule is set up. But you have to learn to adjust to it. But, you know, that, that's, just, that's just one loss in conference play. They're still number one in first place. Yeah. Number two, they got to rebound from this and be ready to go. You, that, that game's got to be over with. You, mm-hmm. you learn from it. You, you, you look at some of the mistakes you made, but you look at the positive. You take the positives out of that game, and you get ready for the next one because, they, they, you know, they got to play. The next, team gonna, the, the next team up is going to be looking to do the same thing. They're playing rival game, uh, Gremlin. So they mm-hmm. got to be ready. And, you know, it's interesting. Last week, we were saying, well, you know, maybe a loss is, is a good thing. But you, you, you were like, wait a minute, Carlos. No, I want to win. Right. <laughs> As a coach, Texas you want to keep winning. Yeah. And, and, and now that they have a loss, and what you're saying is how, how you bounce back from, from some ad- adversity. Right, right, right. They got to bounce back. They got to bounce back. They had, they, they've been close in a couple of games, so they, that means that there was adversity in those games. They overcame it. They won. This time, they could not, they could not overcome it. Now, I'm going to tell you something else that you might want to look at. Mm-hmm. I think because of the, the men playing on television, there was a time change in that game, too. Oh yeah, you're right. Yeah, there's a time right. change in that game. So now you 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 got to factor all of that in. You know those those ladies have been used to playing at a certain time all year in conference play. Now you only got that one day in between. The change of time gives you even less time to prepare for that opponent or be ready for that opponent. They didn't. They did not. Okay, that's normally. Normal for ESPN, they move them up a little bit. That was part of the concern, and I'm sorry for jumping in, but uh, they no, no, no. They, that's great. That's great to know. I did. Right. I was not aware. No, 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 no. Um, the, the, there, there was suggestions that they should have because the men only had like 15 minutes to warm up once the women's game wow. was over with. So uh, they were saying they should have played that game early, but it was actually on schedule. It was actually oh, okay. On schedule. Okay. Mm-hmm. Well, then they tell you that. Uh, then they had to take that away then. So everything else was it was a normal game day for for the ladies. Just the prayer view had the better mm-hmm. day, and they came up and they showed it by winning the game by ten. And, and, and to your point, if I'm not mistaken, when um, correct me if I'm wrong, when Southern and Jackson State played on ESPNU, that, that game was on about eight o'clock. I believe the women's game moved up a little bit, if I'm not mistaken. Right. Well, see, that's what I was thinking that happened with. With with Jackson State women, that that game had been moved up. Yeah. Well, okay, yeah, but it but if it, it was not, so that's even that's even more special for Coach Pugh and her ladies. Well, speaking of of that, uh, D Q out of Atlanta, Georgia. Appreciate him listening. Um, he says, "Prediction, Coach, season coming to the end. Which four teams do you think will host a tournament game?" Now, I wonder if he's Talking about men or women or both, but he said well, we 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 we'll we'll do them both because because right now I'm penciling in Jackson State the host. There's mm-hmm. no way I they, to me with, with uh, the number of games up in the conference season they're gonna be in the top four. I think Southern will still hold uh, hold their place. Texas Southern will be there. That fourth place game, my heart says they and them are host. But prayer views right on them, along with Alcorn. This is a, this this weekend will decide a lot because you got Southern and Alcorn, both of them coming into Alabama. So Alabama A and M's women 
they have a chance to improve to to uh, solidify their spot, which would give them the fourth team, the fourth team uh, that I think would be in that will host for the tournament. Well, speaking of that, coach, two hottest teams in in the in the in the conference, Alabama A and M on a four game winning streak. This is on the on the women's side. Prairie View, three game winning streak. Alcorn and Southern with a two game. Uh, winning streak and, and and to your point, Southern and Alcorn has to go into Alabama, and then Southern is on the end of that three game road trip. They've got to oh boy, go to the reservation. Yep. And uh, next Saturday, so you're going to see some movements for our seating. But right, on, on, right on the on the women's side right now, you see Jackson State Southern, Texas Southern, Holton, and then Alabama, Prairie View, and then Alcorn State. Buying for that or last spot. home. Yep. Yeah. yep. Okay. That's on the women's side. How about uh, let's switch over to the men's side here, Coach? Well, we 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 had a great game. I thought uh, ESPN did a fantastic job with Jackson State and uh, 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 Prayer View. Uh, I thought Prayer View played an outstanding game. Uh, it's unfortunate about what happened at the end or after the game. Uh, I think. Um, that's the second time in the SWAC this year that that more action took place in the handshake line than it did on the court, and it mm. might be a point might come to a point where you don't need the handshake after a game. I, I I would like to see this happen. I think the officials should make a decision in that in the last few minutes of that second half whether or not that should even take place. In other words, they have blown the whistle. They know that if there's been hard fouls, if there's been chippiness, and in their, in their judgment, the team shouldn't shake hands. And I think the league ought to allow them to say no no handshake at the end of the game. Because if you, if you go like, back to that game, if you mm-hmm. do that game in your mind or go back and view it, the, that last five or six minutes of that game, there were some pretty hard fouls. Mm-hmm. There were some pretty so, – so the emotions were there. And, and it's unfortunate that that happened, but Prairie View still, they hung on uh, to win the game, but the emotions carried over after the game. And, that, know, and that's it, just tough. And, and I understand what you're saying, Coach, because it's interesting. A lot of times, uh, you know, you watch an NBA, it'll be like that wave. All right, we'll see you later. They, they right. go to the respective locker room. So, so let me see if I'm getting this straight. Leave it up to the discretion of the uh, the the officials if they get approval, say from the conference, to step in and decide. Hey, it, it's been some tough fouls the last five six minutes. Motions are running high. Let let's not let's not do this. Is that what right. you're I agree. Yes, I would like to see that, or or even leave it up to the coaches. I can point down on the other sidelines. Hey, man, good game, and we gone. You mm-hmm. you because because. Right after a game, that, that's just like sticking a mic in a player's face right after an emotional game. They may, not, they may say something that they normally wouldn't say if they had a cooling off period. And Coach, so, I think so, you needed a cooling off period when you were Oh, yeah, I did. Oh, there are plenty of games. Oh, I, I need know. one. <laughs> oh, yeah. Now, yeah, there were plenty of games where I need that cooling off period. But, but I, 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 I think that um, – when you had a chance to sit back and allow your emotions to settle down, then I think you make rational decisions. So, yeah, I think something like that should happen. They should look at it. Yeah. Well, and the decision came down. It was consistent and swift. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I yeah. agree. I agree with the con- with the conference decision. I think the commissioner and, and his office were 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 just and fair in it. And it's consistent with what happened with on the women's side. Yeah. And, and, and that's the point. You know, emotions are high. Yep. You, 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 it, it, it really, it really is high. I mean, and to your point, we, I mean, Dr. Prince was talking earlier in our number one about, you know, even post-game press conference, you, you're still emotional as a coach. And you just had to say a very disastrous or disappointing loss. And here's some guy that's, Gonna stick a mic in and say, Coach, how you feel right now? Right. Yep. Yeah. You know what? <clears throat> so, 
I, I, I can understand that, but you don't like seeing that happen. But uh, the conference has they've been consistent with the punishment, and hopefully that's the last that we'll see of that this year. And hopefully next year you won't see any of that. Right, right, right. I, I hope that that the players get the message because you because really when you do stuff like that, you're really being selfish because you're hurting your team. Mm -hmm. You're hurting your team if you do stuff like that and you get suspended. You look at the two kids from Jackson State and then, of course, the young man from Prairie View. Uh, all three of those kids are needed by their respective programs, and you don't, you don't know what the outcome is going to be now in, yeah. in their upcoming games. You know, the impact of right. being so emotional, um, it does have an impact. Um, to the men's side, I pulled up the standings. Wow. And um, our listeners say, uh, DQ, um, same with the men's side. Who you see hosting in, in, in the quarterfinals of the SWAC basketball tournament? Well, I, I really think that the first, the first two will, will host. I think from, from, three, from three through six, it's still up in the air. Well, really, three, th uh, three through seven is still up in the air because they're so close. Mm -hmm. I got a lock on Prairie View. I have a lock on Texas Southern. All right, Alcorn Southern, Alabama State, and Grambling, to me, is still up in the air because they're so close. And you look at Alabama State. They, they've oh, won five games yeah. in a row. Yeah. So, see, this weekend alone, they, they can improve their position because the two teams in front of them got to come to them. So, to me, it's still it separation huh? Saturday. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yes, you can. <laughs> <laughs> yep, yep. yep. You know, we can call it a re readjustment Saturday because it's going to be if, if Alabama State can hold their home court, it's going to be some big adjustments on the men's side. Yeah, that'll put them at nine and five. Right, that's what I'm wow. saying. So, so it's to me, it's too early to call that. They are playing well right now. They be in Alabama State. They're playing real well, and of course, with the five game winning streak, that's the longest in the league. Prairie View comes in next with a four-game winning streak, but they're the only two teams, Prairie View and Texas Southern, I think that you can pencil in for that turn, uh, for, the, for hosting. For yes, hosting. Sir. Yep. But you, but you know, Coach, last week we were talking about Graham and State and Jackson State. Um, we said Graham and State on the men's side, they won the first three, then they went on the losing streak, then they went on the winning streak. Now they're back on the back to the losing streak. Yep. And Jackson, you just – you just don't know where this thing is going to. And, right. and, then, and then Southern has to go through Alabama State today. Alabama and them, all corners their traveling partners. And then next Saturday could be another crucial game. Southern on the reservation at all corners. Right. So, right. Is there a possibility, hypothetically, that you can look and say Southern could, if they're not careful, and all corners could end up traveling? In the quarter that's true. in the first round. That's true. That's that's what I'm saying. That that's why I did not mess with the, with, with uh spot three and four in mm -hmm. this tournament in the first round because it's too close to call. The the wow. picture be a lot clearer after Monday night. Well, will you get a chance to see um Southern at Alabama and M or uh, I'm gonna see both of them. Yeah, I, I'm start with. I'll see Charles them this, this afternoon, and then of course I I I'll see Coach Wood on on Monday. And you'll yeah. have a a very detailed assessment uh, next. Well, next Saturday, if we're uh, I got to figure out if we're going to be on next Saturday. We may. Okay. Um, we'll 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 let people know about that. Okay. Because next Saturday, but even before then. Um, you'll you'll get a chance to see firsthand uh, Southern and Alcorn State. Of course, uh, you've seen the Alabama State schools. So, man, coach, it's going to be you, you a, a two game losing streak at the wrong time could cost you dearly in this conference. Oh yes, oh yes, because you you want with the way the tournament is set up, you want to host, you want to be at home, you want to give your t kids. A fighting chance by by being in familiar surroundings. So you got to be on your P's and Q's this time of year. Well, as we close this week segment up, Coach, 
anything you would like to add as as far as the women's and the men's um, teams in action in the conference? Well, it, 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 I think there's some exciting basketball going on in the SWAT conference. Uh, I like what the coaches and the teams are doing this year. Our fans, all the fans, need to come out and support these schools uh, because, you know, I, I was a little hurt when I watched the Southern crowd. I mean, I'm sorry, the uh, Prairie View crowd on uh, on Monday. You know, they're on national television, and the, their fans didn't come out for that men's game. And when you look at it, they're – their team is in first place. And then uh, at, at the same weekend now, same night, you look up in the MEAC and they got a and on and they got a sellout. So, see, our fans, our fans have had to step up, not just the Prairie View fans, all of our SWAC fans, mm-hmm. because attendance is down. Even last week when uh, Alabama State, Alabama a and that used to be the hottest team in the state of Alabama. That used to be the hottest ticket in the state, when we played against each other, you could have put five or six more thousand people in, the, in that arena on Saturday because the seats were available. So all of our mm-hmm. fans have got to come out. We got to support yeah. our schools. We got to support our own. So that's, that's, that's just a message to all the alumnus. Support your schools. Yeah. Yep. Well... Word to the wise. I appreciate um, what you were just saying about attendance because it always can be better. And, you know, after the conference season is over, we can go back and look at the numbers and we can see who who needs to improve. And, and from basically what you're saying, it could improve all across the board. Yes, that, and that's true. That's true, all across the board. Yeah. So it, it, so it's a it's a collective plea for our fans and and our alumnus to support our institutions because if we don't do it, nobody's going to do it. And yeah. we, and we, 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 we can't complain uh, because if, 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 if we're, if our fans are spending the money to get it to, uh, to support our schools, it helps improve the programs because that's the only way, that's the only way they're going to get a chance to improve and facilities and otherwise. And then that's, yeah. that's just like uh, I read where uh, LSU is going to be playing. Down the, this is changing it a little bit from basketball where LSU is going to play their spring game at uh, Southern. Well, that, that's a good thing for Southern. But now this is the only thing that I'm concerned with. Mm-hmm. You know LSU's locker room has been voted in the top two in the nation. That That's where their players go into. Their locker room – their athletic facilities for football been voted the top two between them and Alabama having the best facilities. Okay. What are those players going to think when they do come on Southern's campus and go in their locker room? How's that going to come over? How's yeah. that going to come across? Yeah, no, they're not at LSU. Yep, that's for sure. That's for sure. But I think it's great for Southern. I think it's great for the city of Baton Rouge. And I think there's always been a even back when Coach Joe was there, he used to talk about the support that Dale Brown gave to his program. So that that cooperation or collaboration between Southern University and LSU has always been there since Coach Joe was there, I know. And that's a good yeah. thing. Coach, have mm-hmm. a great weekend. Appreciate it. And uh, we'll let you know uh, about next week. Okay, thank you, and you and everybody be safe and be blessed. Yeah, and happy happy Mardi Gras. <laughs> okay, <laughs> don't party too hard. Although most people would say they were the first. Yep, yep, but it's a little too cold to party right now. <laughs> oh my, I understand. All right, that. thank but you enjoy guys. Enjoy yourself. Have a great weekend. Okay, bye bye. All right, that was Coach uh, Van Petaway, former men's basketball coach at Alabama and NIM. Take a break, top of the hour break, four minutes late, but that's all right. We can do that here. Coming up next, Charles Edmond of the Alcorn State Radio Network. He's somewhere in the great metropolis of Huntsville, uh, Alabama, but he'll join me next. And then following him, Brandon B.J. Jones. You're listening to the Carlos Brown Show on the Open Mic Broadcast Network and Spreaker.com. One voice. It can get the point across, but it only carries so far. 
Add a voice. It's richer, louder, but that has limits too. Add a third voice. It's even more powerful. Add another, and another, and many, many more, and we are stronger than ever. That's the power of a community coalition. They help community groups, faith groups, civic organizations, PTAs, employers, and many others in your community organize their resources and focus them where they're needed most, like fighting to keep kids away from drugs. Ask a group that you belong to if they should belong to a community coalition. It's easy to get involved. Visit helpyourcommunity.org and they'll tell you exactly how your group can help. That's helpyourcommunity.org because you get more when we get together. Brought to you by the Office of National Drug Control Policy and the Ad Council. Chris, can you put the video game controller down for a second? I can talk and play. Oh, I'm totally annihilating this punk kid in Nebraska. I just feel like you're not acting like a grown-up in our relationship. M2, M2! Well, you know, you still ride your skateboard to work, there's the comic book collection, the race car bed... Look, I'm young at heart, but I put money to my 401k every paycheck. I picked up a few savings tips at feedthepig.org. I have control of my financial life now, and that feels pretty grown up. Put away a few bucks, feel like a million bucks. Putting some money from every paycheck into a savings account or contributing to your 401k can make a big difference later. For free ideas and easy tips on ways to save, go to feedthepig.org. That's feedthepig.org. So, I bet I look like a grown up to you now. Well, except for the footy pajamas, I'd have to agree. This message brought to you by the American Institute of Certified Public Accountants and the Ad Council. Welcome back to this week's edition of the Carlos Brown Show. Heard exclusively right here on the Open Mic Broadcast Network and Spreaker.com. Next guest, Charles Edmond of the All Corn State Radio Network, live from the great metropolis of Huntsville, Alabama. Charles, good morning to you. Good morning, Charles Edmond, reporting for duty. <laughs> uh, you are in Huntsville, right? <laughs> You're not in the outskirts, huh? <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, some coaches, a famous coach that used to coach in Baton Rouge, he would like to have his team at the team hotel on the outskirts, not in the heart <laughs> of the action. So I don't know. I, uh, that's why I asked you. You know, it may be the same for you. <laughs> no. <laughs> no, no, sir. <laughs> <laughs> we're, we're right in the middle of the action. Well... We just talked to Coach Petaway and uh, a listener, uh, DQ, out of uh, Atlanta, Georgia, basically asked Coach uh, the teams that would host in the conference and quarterfinals of the tournament. And on the men's side, he basically said, Purview and Texas Southern a lot, but you got a log jam. All Corn State, eight and five. Southern, eight and five. Alabama State, seven and five. Grambling State seven to six, Jackson State seven to six. Charles, a two game losing streak could be deadly at this point in the conference. Absolutely. Absolutely it is. And uh, you know, I think the the team that could spoil the party at least in the short term is Alabama A and M. Team we're mm. playing today. You know, they yeah. could I mean, you just gotta look at it. I mean, they're they're three and nine. Um, they're you know, they're they're not going anywhere. And so therefore, and we just got we just beat them by one at our place. So this this team plays well at home. We're gonna to have to play really well to win. And if you drop a couple of games, um, you could find yourself out of the top four. And but I also think things are gonna get interesting at the top uh, with Prairie View and Jackson State. Of course, we all know what happened on Monday night that ugly incident, suspensions, and all that. That could play a factor as well, although I think it'll be more of an impact for Jackson than it is Prairie View, because Prairie View's on the uh, uh, UAPB Valley Swing. I do think they'll get by those two even without 
some of those pieces. But Jackson State, they play Grambling at Grambling. That's not going to be good. No. Big game. And, and now that I reflect back on the game, Purview and them to me, if you use one word to describe them, defense. I've yep. seen them on television twice, and they just flat out get out. They make you so uncomfortable. I mean, they're just in you defensively. And in Jackson State, we joke all the time that there's a football game that breaks out in a basketball game because they're physical in the defense. So, but you, you, you didn't forecast or see at the time something like that happening, an altercation after, after the game. But both teams really play outstanding defense. They're, they're known as a defensive culture. For basketball, you know, I, you know, Coach Smith's done a really good job there, and you know, he's he's. You talk about intensity. You talk about a team that reflects their coach. Mm-hmm. You know, Coach Smith, and I was just, I just happened to be at one of the shoot arounds when we played them uh, in January. He's as passionate, as intense with every practice, everything they do. You, you got to be focused, and I think that reflects on what you see in the game. Um, I mean, obviously what happened after one was unfortunate. And I think Jackson State was a little frustrated. I mean, Jackson State's got some scores. I think they're probably the more athletic team in the conference. you got Jed. you got those other guys. They can match up. They are deep. And for Prairie View to lock Jackson State down the way they did, it, it speaks a lot to Prairie View's defense and the intensity. And, and to win championships, you got to play defense. So I, I think clearly, you know, to your point, if, if Prairie View can get through this little rough patch here, uh, I, I think they will win the regular season. And in championship basketball, the postseason, it's all about defense. Yeah, well, defense, when you think of Prairie View, and that's what they hang their hat on. Um, Alcorn State and Southern on a two-game winning streak. They're travel partners. They're going through the state of Alabama. Then next Saturday, got a huge matchup on the reservation. Alabama State, besides Prairie View, two hottest teams, five-game winning streak with Alabama State. Grandma State and Jack State on the two-game losing streak. So this thing won't get settled for a while yet, but after Monday, as Coach Petaway would say, things may start to look a little bit clearer, but definitely not um, – where you sit back and say, oh, this is the way it's going to end, because I think it's still going to come down to the last conference playing day, which is fast approaching, Charles. It is. You know, we got, what, two weeks left? <clears throat> two weeks and we're and, and, and we're done. Um, you know, I think, you know, Prairie View and Texas Southern, they still have to go to Texas. I'm, I'm sorry, Prairie View and Texas Southern, they still have the Bama teams, and uh, they got to come to Alcorn and, and Southern. So I, I, I think, you know, for the first time, Carlos, in a number of years, we can make the statement that the SWAC is wide open on the men's side. You know, in years past, it was all about Mike Davis and Texas Southern. And, you know, it's just a matter of, you know, how much they would win by, how many games they would win the regular season by. But this year, it's kind of back to the old SWAC in terms of it's wide open. you got five or six teams that are right there. And now you've got teams that want to host a first-round tournament game. I think it just adds more intrigue. To, to the regular season instead of just, you know, who's at the top. It's you want that first round tournament game at home. And Montez Robinson wants it. He's tasting it. He's thirsty for it. You know, after, you know, we didn't, we barely made the tournament last year. And now here we are sitting uh, just a couple of games out of first place. So there, there, there's definitely a lot to pull for Southern too. Southern just squeaked in last year. You can see where they are tied right, with the Braves. So it, there's definitely a, a, a lot of excitement here with a couple of weeks left. Visiting with, uh, oh, excuse me, visiting with Charles Etman of the Alcorn State Radio Network here on a SWAG basketball uh, report. Uh, when we look over uh, at the women's side, we, we kind of start with the men's first. Uh, today, Jackson State, of course, congratulations to the Prairie View a and Coach Pugh, staff, and the players. They were able to take down the invincible Jackson State women's basketball team, um, Jackson State on a one-game losing streak. That seems kind of weird to say that <laughs> because they, they they won a 12-game winning streak. Southern 10-3, and 
two game winning streak. Texas Southern nine and three on a one game winning streak. Alabama A and M on a four game winning streak. They're eight and four. Prairie View A and M now on a three game winning streak. Had their struggles early on. Now seven and five. Alcorn State on a two game winning streak. Um, seven and six. On the women's side, still a lot to be a lot to play for. If you're, you're Southern, Texas Southern, you're still trying to catch Jackson State, but then you also look in your, at seeding as far as in, in the uh, tournament. Yep, I think that's what it's about right now. Um, Jackson State's got a two-game lead. They still have to make the Alabama trip, and uh, they still have Valley, um, obviously Valley of Pine Bluff. They play Grambling, that has struggled. So I think the schedule kind of favors JSU a little bit, but mm-hmm. hats off to Coach Pugh and the Lady Panthers. I mean, it, it, it shows you that never count out a Sandy Pugh coach team is what it told me. Because the way it looked the first few games of the season, especially when we played them, I just felt like they didn't have enough offense uh, to be able to get over the hump. But they have found a way. You know, they, they were on a little run right now. They're 7-5, and five, and they're playing for a first-round home game right now. So, you know, definitely the upset of the year in, in SWAC basketball was what happened at Prairie View the other night. So congratulations to Coach Pugh. And now they uh, they have to make the trek to the Valley and, and Pine Bluff. And uh, I think they'll get by those two. So Prairie View could be on a nice little run before they come back home to take on the Alabama team. So Prairie View, you know, watch out. I mean, they could be top four, top three, if, if you really look at it. Maybe even top two if they keep winning. You never know. And... Uh, as you stated, they had their troubles early on, but they've had adversity. Uh, they fought through it, and now look at it. And and future looks bright for them. From what I I saw, their recruiting class that's going to be coming in. So, you know, Coach Pugh and what she's done in in the conference. So, um, kudos again to uh, Prairie View and the women basketball uh, team upsetting Jackson State. Uh, Charles last Saturday on the women's side it was Southern over Pine Bluff eighty five to sixty one, All Corn State, uh, a three point victory over Mississippi Valley State, Jackson State over Texas Southern seventy two to sixty one, Prairie View and M, a seven point victory over Grambling State sixty five to fifty eight, and it was Alabama and M over Alabama State fifty six to fifty five. Um, Charles, this All Corn State women's basketball team. I'm kind of concerned from the outside looking in. Tell me why I shouldn't be concerned. Tell me why you should not be concerned. Why I shouldn't be concerned, but I am. <laughs> Try to convince me. Um, because in in the postseason, it's about defense. And the Lady Braves can get you to turn over 25 for 30 times. Uh, that's why you shouldn't be concerned. Because they're going to get so many possessions, and they're going to wear you down defensively, especially in the second half. Every game this season in conference, the games, even the games that they've lost, in which they've been down big, they've been down by as many as 30 to Texas Southern, made it a 13-point game, where their defense imposes their will upon you. Jackson State, the same thing. All the games in conference that we've lost, we've been able to make a run based on our defense. So that being said, if our defense can continue to turn you over, and in championship basketball, that makes the difference. Now, offensively, you know, we got some work to do. But defensively, if you continue mm. to create turnovers and possessions and opportunities, and you start knocking down some shots, you know, that's why you should not be concerned. Because Lady Braves defense, one of the top defensive teams in the nation in terms of steals, turnovers, in the top, I think, 15 in the country in that category. And if you can get that many possessions based on turnovers, you have a chance. The reason I'm asking that because I'm looking at Southern, a 31-point victory over um, Mississippi Valley State, Alcorn, a three-point victory over uh, Mississippi Valley State. However, a win is a win. I understand that, and they were able to win. But it just seems like the team that you would think they – should definitely win and win handedly. They've kind of struggled. Is it 
because of what you said, because they rely so much on turning other teams over defensively or, or offensively if they're not doing that. If they're not doing that, if that if they're not forcing teams to turn over offensively, is Coach Pruitt satisfied with this team and their scoring ability? No, uh, she's not satisfied with it. She she's not satisfied with the number of missed layups, the number of missed opportunities, the number of missed free throws. I mean, we're we're down near the bottom in terms of free throw shooting. So offensively, we're getting what we want. We're getting in the line. We're just not knocking them down. Um, mm-hmm. in, in that all court Southern game, I mean, and I, I, I see where you're going with it. You know, we had a horrible first quarter. We were down, what, 21 to 7 at the end of the first quarter. And, you know, when you're down 14 on the road early, it, it's going to be hard to come back and, and, and win, especially offensively, you struggled. Um, but, you know, as far as. The concerns, I think, is not on the defensive end. Our concerns mm-hmm. right now are on the offensive end and missing so many easy opportunities. You know, when you're getting 60 and 70 possessions, or 70 shot attempts, I should say, you know, you, you if, if you're efficient offensively, you can blow away any team in the league. But when you're not putting the ball in the bucket, when you're shooting 28, 29%, it evens out. And then when you miss 13 or 14 free throws, it evens out. So, you know, I think offensively is the problem right now. Um, Mm -hmm. You know, we're still kind of challenged in the post. We're not getting the kind of productivity in the post that we would like to. We have a guy, a a lady named Tatiana Eisler, who's about 5'11", who plays like she's about 6'2". But in terms of size, I mean, you know, when you're facing uh, Doriana Lewis, who's about 6'3", and you got the Twin Towers from Texas Southern, Southern's got some bigs. You know, it, it, it makes it tough offensively. So I think that's the biggest problem right now. It's all about offense. We mm-hmm. can turn you over 25 times easy. But if you don't convert on the offensive end, it, it makes an easy game tough. And that's kind of what we dealt with, and especially getting off the sluggish starts, which we've had for the most part done throughout the, court of, throughout the course of conference. Monday, which is February the 17th, of course it was uh, Texas Southern over. Grambling State by 23. It was Southern over Valley by 31, 71 to 40. Alcorn State over UAPV, 57 to 54. And Prairie View and them over Jackson State, of course, 62 to 52. So that's how it went on on Saturday and Monday, uh, Charles, uh, with swag basketball on the women's side. Hey, although I asked uh, – uh, Tough question about Alcorn State. They were able to put together two back-to-back three-point victories. Hey, isn't that what it's all about, getting a W? Absolutely. It's not going to be easy the rest of the way. You know, we just talked with Coach Robinson a little while ago. I mean, he would have it any other way. I mean, he'll take the win, but he knows and understands that he keeps you know illustrating the point to to his team. That these games are not going to be easy. I think the blowouts are done. I mean, you got so much at stake in all these games. Teams trying to win the regular season, teams trying to play for a home game, teams trying to make the tournament. Um, so every night's going to be a dog fight these next couple of weeks. So, uh, you know, for it to be easy, I think that's gone. I mean, you, you might, but I, I highly doubt it. Um, but this, this Braves team, one of the best free throw shooting teams in the conference. Um, that's been our key. You know, we, we shot a lot better from beyond the arc. We know we're, we're a three point shooting team and we've struggled during that three game slide, but, uh, getting home and we were able to, to withstand a Valley team that hit 18, three pointers on us last week. And I tell you what, Valley, Valley with Simmons and Caleb Hunter, that's a terrific duo. And if they're on, they could be, they could be a spoiler for some teams down the stretch. But we were able to withstand that. We were able to get to the free throw line, and they missed nine free throws. They lost by four, so that was a difference. But uh, for this Braves team, I mean, you know, if, if we're shooting the ball well, get some decent post play, and where our defense has been playing the last couple of games, you know, we, we could be in uh, for a fun ride these next couple of weeks. Well, it's going to come down to who wants it the most as, as far as – Swag basketball, the teams in the conference, 
Um, it, it, it'll come down. It's going to be exciting, both on the women's and the men's side. Now, speaking of the men, uh, last Saturday, Texas Southern over Jackson State, 77-74. Uh, Alabama State over Alabama A&M, 61-58. to It was uh, Alcorn State over Mississippi Valley, 92-88. to Prairie View, a six-point victory over Grambling State, 75-69. And uh, Southern over Arkansas Pine Bluff, 73-49. Then Monday, February the seventeenth, it was Texas Southern over Grammar State, ninety-three to seventy-nine. Uh, Alcorn State over Arkansas Pine Bluff, sixty to fifty-two. Prairie View A and M over Jackson State, seventy to sixty-one, and Southern over Mississippi Valley State, ninety-five to sixty-two. I would be impressed. Now Southern on a three-game road trip, starting in the Alabamas, and then next Saturday, Alcorn State. I'm going to be honest with you. Talking to uh, some on social media this past week, you got to win two out of three if, if, if you're Southern. And that's probably going to – that's going to be a tall order. But if you look at it, Alabama State, five-game winning streak, they're, they're pretty pretty tough. Southern starts there. Alabama and then Monday night and then Alcorn next Saturday. What do you think about that, Charles? Is that difficult? Is that too difficult of a task for either Southern or Alcorn State? Well, Alcorn's going to be at home against Southern, but uh, going on this Alabama road trip, uh, could Alcorn State be looking at, hey, can we get two of three as well? Yeah, I think I think Southern and Alcorn are kind of thinking the same thing. The difference is that the Braves will be at home for the last three, and the Southern will complete their three in a row on the road. I think I think this game tonight between Southern and Bama State will help set the table for them, because Bama State that Bama State has gotten to be sneaky good all of a sudden, and you can't be surprised because <laughs> they sneaky good. <laughs> yeah, 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 sneaky good. I mean, you know, look, think, think about it, Carlos. They're number of teams, and I, I'll you know I, I can say this, and I, I I'll admit it. There's a number of teams that me personally, Charles Edmund, wrote off. You know, dumped on the side of the road a few weeks ago. And uh, Bama State was one of those teams. Lady Panthers of Prairie View, another one of those teams. And yet here they are. They've, they've, they've come alive. And uh, But, you know, you can't be surprised, totally surprised because Bama State, Bruce Jackson's been around this thing as, as long as we, we can remember, and he knows how to fix it. Sandy Pugh knows how to fix it, although she's in a fairly new, has a fairly new team in her second season. But uh, I, I think for Southern, this is the one they got to get. Because if they don't get this one, I th- and especially if A&M beats Alcorn today, a and is going to be pretty fired up. And, and if Southern comes out of Alabama with two losses, then the pressure's on next Saturday for Southern to win at Alcorn to get in the top four. Um, and, and for the Braves, you know, they, this is the one they need to get, I think. Because them, A&M has typically played us tough here. And uh, we play well at Bama State, but we've also struggled there, too. we got to get one of these two before we come home for the next three. Um, and, and those three at home, I mean, won't be easy. You know, Texas Southern, Prairie, you playing for perhaps the regular season championship on our, on our floor, perhaps. So uh, this, this weekend for Southern and Alcorn, I think, especially for Southern, I think, that, you know, table, uh, table setters, I think. For, for down the stretch. Well, we will quickly give the schedule, and then it's a couple other things I want to get your take on um, as far as what's going on in in, 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 in the conference. Texas Southern and uh, Saturday today, Texas Southern and Mississippi uh, Valley State, Southern and Alabama State, Jackson State at Grandma State, it's both women and men, Alcorn State at Alabama A&M, and Prairie View and at Arkansas Pine Bluff. Monday, February 24th, Prairie View at Mississippi Valley State, Texas Southern at Arkansas Pine Bluff, Southern at Alabama and m and Alcorn State at Alabama State. Well, Charles, September the 10th, 2022. If the creator say is the same, are you going to keep your word and try to be at uh, Tiger Stadium in Baton Rouge? That's when Southern and LSU will get it on in Tiger Stadium, football game. And I'm sure you'll tell me all about it. 
if you're able that's to make it. That's the plan, Carlos. If everything stays the same, that's the plan for me to be there. So you're not turning flips, jumping for joy over here, huh? <laughs> <laughs> Carlos, I got to see it. Uh, there's just some things, just like Southern and LSU baseball, you know, uh, up until they started playing, I, and you and I have had this conversation. I would love to see to have seen Southern and LSU play a baseball game, two teams right there in town. They, they play each other. Uh, I don't know if they, they played each other in basketball recently. Couldn't do that, but Southern and LSU or football, I would love to see it. Just just to be a part of that whole deal. And hey, Southern and LSU have a good relationship. The uh, LSU spring game is going to be at Mumford Stadium. I, I know there may not be a lot of happy folks about that, but that's something I would like to just, you know, to be a part of and see that. Just just to be a part of that atmosphere. But, but yes, if everything stays the same, my plan, unless something changes, is to be at Tiger Stadium in 2022 to see Southern play LSU. That is the plan right now in 2020. Things might change between now and then, but my plan is to be there. <laughs> you know, <laughs> your fallback plan may be uh, the spring game. That 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 <laughs> that's going to happen on April 18th <laughs> at AW yeah. Mumford Stadium. Um, it's going to be interesting. Yeah, you know, a lot of Man, a lot of conversation, some good comments, some bad comments on social media. Ah, just govern yourself. What, what of the bad? I, I guess you know, we were texting the other day about it. Some bad comments. I mean, what what's the negative aspect of this? The well, fact that another school you, is coming. You go on the website, <laughs> um, tigerdroppings.com, dot com, and just gave him a plug. Um, you know. Concerns about violence, cars being uh, broken into. Oh, um, come on. Is it going to be safe? Oh, come on. Why not having that game in Shreveport? Come on. New Orleans, the spring no. game. Yeah, I understand. So, yeah. Um, yeah. That, you, you know, that's wow. just, just, just shameful. Those comments in. Um, Okay, if, so if, there was if, if deep feelings on 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 both sides, because then when Southern Knights hear that those type of comments, then they buckle down, of course, and say, "Well, yeah. hey, if you're that concerned, stay your blank over on the other side of town." So, yes, <sighs> it. So what? So were there no concerns last year when LSU came to Southern to play a baseball game? Good point. I I, I saw oh, LSU man. fans there before. I wasn't yeah. at that particular game but i've been to the lsu and southern baseball game before uh, yeah no. at lehigh seal no problems no. packed the band was there um yeah. come on I, I i'm not gonna say that that's how all of their fans feel because i don't know all of their fans but if you yeah. base on some of the comments that have been on social media it would make one think that that's how they feel you know, totality, totally how they feel, but come on, come on. Yeah. The, some of these comments yeah. shame, just shameful. Wake up. I mean, look, I guarantee you, Southern Roman Banks, the administration, every athletic hand will be on deck for that spring game to make sure that everyone has an enjoyable experience. I have complete faith and trust. I mean, the same thing what people say about Jackson State and you know I mean it's just you know not going to Memorial Stadium and all that other stuff look people people are going to do what's in their best interest in terms of making sure an event is safe plenty of security plenty of police presence all that stuff that's no matter what event you go to that that's typically the case so I you know I I, I agree with you I mean come on folks let's let's wake up here I mean I think it was a I think it's a great idea Great. Terrific. I mean, it just shows you the kind of relationship that those two schools have. I mean, for Southern to host LSU in baseball, I think it's the second time that's happened. No problems, no issues. Great camaraderie, great relationship between the two administrations, two schools 15 minutes apart in the same same city. Come on. I mean, I, I think I think we need to look beyond that. I mean, I'm, I'm in total disagreement with those negative comments. And I love Southern. And I love the Jaguar Nation. You know, they're great fans. They're passionate. I guarantee you, everyone's going to make sure, everyone at Southern is going to make sure that that experience for all fans who come to that LSU spring game is going to be enjoyable. 
Move along quickly because we got 11:34 Central Standard Time. Uh, Cedric Thomas resigns from University of Alabama. <laughs> University of Alabama, excuse me. University of Arkansas Pine Bluff. Excuse me. See, I'm human. I'm only human, flesh and blood. I am. Um, Cedric Thomas resigns from the University of Arkansas Pine Bluff. Doc Gamble now the new coach. Charles, you know Coach Thomas. What's the real skinny behind him leaving Arkansas Pine Bluff? Something's got to be rotten in Denmark. Well, they say timing is everything. You just had your, your recruiting class. So you're kind of settling in, getting ready for spring ball, and then boom, this happens. Um, I am surprised. Um, you know, you hear a lot of stuff, you know, out there in the wind. Um, you know that you know this 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 recruitment has been in the past. I mean, in previous years, Thomas has been courted by USM to come, you know, with Coach Hobson. I've heard that um, in in the wind. Um, I don't have any, I haven't been really dig deep into it because it just happened and I have to kind of let things settle, but it's clearly a surprise. I mean, you go from your hometown team. I mean, you're at home, Cedric Thomas and UAPB, that's home, Pine Bluff. And to leave there to, to be not a, uh, a coordinator, but just on the defensive side of the ball, um, a little bit less money. Uh, I think it is kind of shocking for, for, for folks. I have to get more details on it, but it's definitely a surprise, you know, for him to, to leave that situation. Um, I know they have, um, a new AD there who just started. I don't know if, you know, that had anything to do with it. I would say no, because he just got started and said that Thomas had the, the best record that they've had since 2013 there winning season. So, I mean, there, there's definitely something there. I just don't know what's there <laughs> at this point. I'm sure there's a lot of stuff going around. Yeah, well, I'm, I'm going to throw a little shot out there. I I know another fan base is happy about Doc Gamble moving in and being quickly named the head football coach at University of Arkansas Pine Bluff. Let's see, I got it right that time. See, I can get it right three out of four, but the fourth time is the one going to be talked about. That's life. University of Arkansas, Pine Bluff. And that is, Charles, you want to take a guess? I heard from some. They were like, no way. You haven't heard that. I just threw up the possibility of uh, a coach at Alcorn. Maybe it would be interested in that head football job. But that didn't work out. And boy, all Corn State fans are happy. The ones that I talked to, some of them were sweating bullets. Uh, their pants are wet. <laughs> <laughs> they thought Thornton could possibly. It's a possibility. Although I had a few of them say, "No, no way, Carlos. It's not gonna happen." You would like to for that to happen. You would like for that to happen. Why would I like for that to happen? I'm just saying. So Thornton uh, is safe for a while. But eventually, Charles, as I've seen on Southern staff, for whatever reason you want to believe, good coaches eventually move on. Yeah. And I thought it was a perfect storm, but uh, it didn't happen. didn't happen this time. Well, there's, <laughs> there's no doubt that Mr. Thornton – his head coach material. I mean, I think that's the next step in his in his professional career. And he's done a great job here. I'm glad he's still here. Um, but we all know, and Fred and Fred again and I have talked about it. When you're when you have a successful program, or when you have a successful football program, people are gonna come after you and or your coaches. It's just it's just the way it is. It, it's in part of it. And so it's. I think Fred McMahon is prepared for whatever happens. He hopes that the Thornton stays. That's his number one guy. But he also knows that Thornton has a family. He also knows that professionally, never mm-hmm. every assistant coach wants to be a head coach. And, um, you know, there were a lot of talk about Thornton maybe going to Bama State. But Dr. Ely got an extension. So he's going to be there for a while. Um, so, hey, it's just the nature of the business. 
I've heard Thornton's name mentioned all week long, but as of right now, he's a brave, and you know, we'll just, you know, I'm glad he is, and let's hope he continues to be. But you know, people are going to be knocking, kicking down his door at some point, and that right opportunity is going to come. Well, as we close, Charles, for the record, I'm a competitive guy, and I want Thornton right there at all corn. <laughs> I want that staff intact. I want. <laughs> Your second favorite coach in the conference, Odoms, to come in. And at home, you have an opportunity once again to prove yourself that it's a myth that Southern can defeat Alcorn State. <laughs> <laughs> and you'll have the opportunity at home. Doesn't matter. You got to hire four or five coaches. Just got to get it done. No excuses. That's what happened at Alcorn. Remember yep. a few years ago? Four, what, three or four coaches left? Yeah. You got to get it done. That's well, I'll, I'll share this. I'll share this story. I was in New Orleans two days out of three last week. We're at the, a hotel with Southern and Grambling folks. And that's all we talked about was all was Dawson Odoms in this situation and not beating Alcorn. And just like you said, there are no excuses. I'm trying to, I'm, I'm trying to come up with other stuff. And all they said is 10, 10 out of 11, and Southern's got to get to Atlanta. And then my alma mater, our Grambling fans are saying, hey, Grambling's lost two straight in the Bayou Classic. Wake up. I mean, so it, it's, it's, it's tough. It's, it's tough on the bluff, as someone told me two weeks ago. And obviously, uh, football in Louisiana is tough. And I, I got a good, stern, firm lesson about that last week. Uh-huh. All the years I've been telling you. you know, sometimes, sometimes you need to hear from someone else. You know, that, that hey, it it is what it is. Yeah. And as I often have said, sometimes being second, you know, being second is better than being fifth. And if I, and if I have to hear one more time, and I'll hear it before this show is over with, <laughs> about be careful because you're going to end up Southern like Jackson State. Well, wait a minute. Jackson State and Southern are two different colleges, two different mindsets. Being second place consistently can can become a curse if there's no incentive to move past that point because you feel that, hey, second place is – it's not bad. Second best. We've gotten there, but you, if you're a competitor, you want to push through and get it done. But if I have to hear that one more time, I think I'm going to lose it. I'm going to lose it. my lunch and everything else. That you're going to be just like Jackson State. No. How can you make that claim? How can you make that claim if you look at it, really? But I'll stop there. I could go on. <laughs> Time won't permit. I have to get to <laughs> my final guess. But um, I guess it was eye opening for you last week in New Orleans. And yeah, by the way, yeah. All Corn State, I almost had Ole Miss yep. in baseball. So, yep. as usual, baseball has the potential to get it, get it done. Wow. But have a great weekend. Quick, quickly, Carlos, before before you go, here in Huntsville, I don't know if you saw on social media, they're going to be building a new arena here, um, here in Huntsville. The design and plans came out. So that's just something to, to keep in mind. You talk about improving the program. They're, they're going to build a new arena here. Uh, they're going to break ground sometime this year. In the next couple of years, there'll be a new arena here in Huntsville to replace the Elmore Gym. So that's just I don't know if you saw it on social media, but they just came out with it probably in the last day or two. Right. Thanks, for the, folks. thanks for the head up, heads up. Wow, I didn't know that. A historic gymnasium. Now a brand new arena. I wonder what the tennis uh, capacity is going to be. 5,000, perhaps? Uh, we'll find. Um, I, I, don't, I, didn't, I, I didn't see a capacity. They were just talking about the basic info in terms of and there's going to be a hotel complex associated with it as well. So okay. just I did see that part. space. Okay. Yeah. All that's out there on that I think A and M just released it in the last day or two. Well, 
I understand. Appreciate it. Have a great broadcast and a great weekend. We'll talk soon. All right, Carlos. Appreciate it. All right. I'm going to take a quick break. That was Charles Edmund of the All Corn State Radio Network. Um, Brandon B.J. Jones joins me next. You're listening to the Carlos Brown Show on the Open Mic Broadcast Network at Spreaker.com. We'd like to recognize the sponsors. Attorney Lee Van Richardson, located at 1047 Austin Street in Hempstead, Texas. Their phone number is 979-826-8008. Diva Skin Conditioner, located at divafeet.com, D-I-V-A-H feet.com. Their phone number, 903-270-0026. Prairie View Athletic Club, serving student athletes since 1986. Their phone number is 936-857-5817. Temple of Refuge Ministries, located in Prairie View, Texas, at 45372 Old Highway 290. Brazos Valley Schools Credit Union, several locations to serve you. Katy, Rosenberg, Brenham, Bryan, College Station, and Waller, Texas. Their phone number is toll-free, 855 391 2149. If you or your business would like to be a part of the sponsorship team here at the Open Mic Broadcast Network, contact us at What a beautiful arrangement. Crisp, clear, and you can hear it. Ah, some things are consistent. That's the human jukebox. Welcome back to this final segment of the Carlos Brown Show. Heard exclusively right here on the Open Mic Broadcast Network and Spreaker.com. Brandon B.J. Jones joins me. B.J., good morning in bad news, but... If you're still in Atlanta at this present moment, good afternoon. Yeah, man. Good um, good afternoon. I'm actually on the move. I'm actually in, in headed to Alabama. Oh, okay. Alabama. So you're in Central Stand the same now, huh? Yeah. <laughs> We're still morning. It's always kind of weird when you wake up early. They say I'm ahead. Anytime you head east. And, you know, we're only an hour away from the, the, the designated line that separates the time zone. And you feel like, man, this this day is getting away from me. But then you you go back down the hour and you say, hey, it's still there. Yeah, the days are starting to get longer again. And uh, maybe not the last snap of cool weather or cold weather, shall I say. Excuse me. But um, you long for the spring days as uh, fast approaching where it's 80 to 90 degrees and a bit of humidity. That's what you have to look forward to, BJ. That sounds good to me. I, I hate the cold weather, so hey. In the time we can, we can we can start getting in the seventies and eighties, I'm all good. Yeah, unless you're getting ready for spring practice, then well, it still will be much more pleasant than fall camp if you get my drift. Oh yeah, <laughs> man. you you'll you'll take that that spring weather compared to what you'll get in the fall. If you come back to Baton Rouge. In the summer, and it's so humid, it's almost like you can see the heat in the air. Man, that's uh, that's almost like a life-altering experience right there. Yeah, I, I understand. And um, last week and the week before that, kind of talking about this recruiting uh, classes and, 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 and your rankings, I kind of wanted to continue uh, that and then kind of um, – Get your thoughts on, and I'm just interested to hear your thoughts on um, Cedric Thomas, resigns from the University of Arkansas Pine Bluff to take a job um, at Southern Miss, Southern and LSU playing in football in 2022, and then LSU spring game will be at Southern University's A.W. Mumford Stadium. Um, just an interesting week 
in sports in the conference. Man, this has been a very interesting week. When you throw in, I think the news about Cedric Thomas uh, really took us by storm. Uh, I mean, I was shocked to see that, especially it was first reported that he was going to Southern Miss uh, as a defensive coordinator. And then it was later brought out that he was going to be a position coach. And then you look at the pay scale, Southern Miss isn't, you know, like, you know, Joe Public Power, you know, Power 5 FBS schools. They are known for, you know, discounted, you know, coaching contracts, to say the least. So you look at, you know, Coach Thomas, you know, Coach Thomas taking a pay cut and leaving his alma mater. Now you got people who have more questions than they have answers. Mm-hmm. So it's going to be interesting to see what happens at UAPB. I think that UAPB does have a unique set of circumstances uh, that they have. They, UAPB is a small school. Uh, they only have about 2,500 students. That's, that's small. Uh, you talk about for, uh, as far as the, the SWAT schools. Um, the And I made this argument earlier this week. The Division two schools in that state, facilities-wise, are either at UAPB's level or a little bit above. We're talking about Henderson State and uh, Wachita Baptist and Harding and, uh, you know, Arkansas Tech. Those schools, are, even though they're Division two, are at that level or higher. We're talking about facilities, and they've had more on-field uh, success. So Arkansas Pine Bluff isn't a easy place to win, but it seems like Coach Thomas had them on track. Uh, but then to leave, like I said, you got more people who have more questions than what they have answers. Yeah, I, I think legitimate questions because, you know, I say where there's smoke, there's fire. Boy, uh, now that term, I don't know if I should have used that term. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but when you look at it, you're absolutely right. And uh, had them, you know, trending upwards. And yeah. I think he will – you will hear his name again in the conference. I'll just put it that way. Oh, absolutely. So, yeah, I think you, you'll definitely hear his name again. Yeah. Uh, it, it, it could be several places that he could land. But, again, does he want to – does he want to be a head coach in the conference? I think that still will be his, his, his goal, to be a, a, a head coach in the conference or a head coach again respective of either, you know, whatever conference he wants to go to. I think one of the things that we forget when we start talking about head coaching jobs, that ho- that head coaching position comes with an amount of stress. We look at the, the amount of money that's being paid out and the prestige of being a head coach, but that position comes with some stress. And a lot of guys just, quite frankly, the trade-off for the money and the stress just isn't worth it because that stress – can affect the, the the household. Can affect the family. Even though you're making the money, sometimes you know money ain't uh, you know money can't replace everything. So you'll be know, to you know, hear kind of what his thoughts about doing that, or was it was it a situation where he just felt like you know what I don't I don't need the stress. Uh, I was always taught that money is good.